Hello again, this is Linda, Senior Naturalist with Lorain County Metro Parks. And for our bird ID class today, we are going to be talking about ducks. So one thing you wanna do when you are learning to identify ducks is to kind of determine whether they are a dabbling duck or a diving duck. So when we are using um, a book for reference, you can look in your bird guide, but also Sibley's puts out this great folding laminated uh, ID card. And as you can see, they separate them out, whether they are a dabbling duck or a diving duck. So in the first part of our session today on ducks, we are going to be kind of talking about how to determine if it's a dabbling duck or a diving duck. And then the second part will be actually species identification. All right, so whether they are a dabbling duck or a diving duck kind of is determined by what they eat and how they catch it. Okay, so first off, we wanna talk about um, their beak. So this here, this is a beak of a dabbling duck, and you can see how long and kind of flat that beak is. And what we mean by dabbling, they kind of dabble their beak in the shallow water, and they have little filters some of them more so than others that it's easy to see, but um, when they do that, it kind of strains out the little food that they like to eat, such as the phytoplankton and little, little bugs and um, plants that they separate out. So in referring to a duck you're probably a little more familiar with, uh, his beak is not quite as uh, prominent as that other bird I showed you, but you can still see that the beak is elongated and flattened, and again, that allows it to dabble around to get its food. A diving duck, on the other hand, has a very much of a shortened beak, and uh, it's a little bit taller in proportion to the dabbling ducks. And the diving ducks typically eat fish, okay? So uh, difference in food source there. So the other interesting thing between diving ducks and dabbling ducks is the placement of their legs. So when we look at the mallard, we see that its legs are placed right kind of in the middle of its body, so it can easily walk on land. Whereas when we look at a diving duck, his feet are almost at the very back end of its body, okay? And the reason for that is that these feet then are used like propellers because it dives down into the water to capture its food. Many of these diving ducks dive up to 40 feet deep. Okay. So, and when they do that, you can see this bird here. This is a long-tailed duck, once known as the old squaw, but you can see how he has separated out his feet and he's you know, using that as his power source to get down into the bottom of the lake or the pond. So dabbling ducks have that kind of long, flat beak to dabble, and they are typically found uh, in ponds, small bodies of water, maybe near the shoreline, whereas your diving ducks are more of open water birds, okay? Um, so then two, you know, the diving ducks dive deep, but once in a while you will see the dabbling ducks on the surface of the water and kind of putting their beak down. So we call that tipping up. So you end up seeing their bottom end, okay? All right, so it's easy for the dabbling ducks to walk on land, whereas the diving ducks cannot walk on land. All right, so another difference when they are floating in the water is that the dabbling ducks kind of sit high in the water, you know? They appear bigger. Whereas the diving ducks, they kind of compress their feathers so they have more of a low profile when they are floating on top of the water. And here's an example of a diving duck here. and this one as well. Okay. 
So when you're out in the field identifying, you wanna watch their behavior and you wanna see how they sit in the water, okay? Are they kind of riding high or a low profile? As far as um, coloration, typically dabbling ducks are a little more colorful than the diving ducks. Diving ducks tend to be more of the darker brown colors, uh, not as iridescent fancy as some of the dabbling ducks, such as the mallard and the shoveler. Okay, the sizes of the dabbling ducks can really vary. You got some small guys and then some that are a little bit bigger. Whereas your diving ducks, um, they don't seem to have such a large variance in the size of the individual species of birds. The other thing with dabbling ducks is that their wings are kind of large and compared to their body size, whereas diving ducks have kind of smaller wings. Okay, now, so what? So what does that mean? Well, that allows the dabbling ducks to just kind of lift off right out of the water. And then when they're going to land, they can actually come into like a pond in the middle of the woods, circle around and land on a dime. So they are very precise in how they uh, can fly and land. On the other hand, when you're talking about these diving ducks, since they can't walk well on land and their legs are so far behind them, they actually have to have a runway and they kind of run on top of the water and flap their wings until they get enough speed and lift to be able to take off. Okay. And then on the flip side, when they land, they kind of skid, do a skid landing on the surface of the water. The other thing interesting about these diving ducks is that many of them on their feet have an extra lobe, uh, kind of a flattened lobe on one of their toes, and that helps them um, in their, I know it's hard to see, um, helps them in their diving and maneuverability when they're underneath the surface of the water. Okay, so those kind of some basic differences between dabbling ducks and diving ducks. And we are going to post a link on our website to a really cool short little video that kind of um, shows you in real life some of the differences that I've just talked about. And uh, so we will see you then. Thank you.